Good morning and welcome to the Mesa City Council study session for Thursday, September 29th. The first item on our agenda for today's meeting is to review the agenda for Monday's meeting. So if you can take a look at that, Council. Um, interesting that we are issuing a liquor license to the Boy Scouts of America on <laughs> item 3A. Very progressive. There we go. Yeah, I knew they were making some changes there, so that's great. Item four are various purchasing contracts. And item five are various resolutions. Yes, Mr. Cavanaugh. I just wanted to comment under 5D. Uh, I want to applaud the city staff for all the work that uh, they did on the uh, request for uh, funds from the Salt River Pima Maricopa Indian community. I think it again shows a great partnership that our community has with the tribal community. Uh, the uh, grants they're providing really will uh, be substantial assistance for both public and private organizations in our community. Thank you for pointing that out, Mr. Vice Mayor. Yeah, nearly a million dollars from the tribe to help with some infrastructure and, and uh, public safety uh, and education items in Mesa. That's, uh, we very much appreciate that. Can we get a little bit more on 5D? Absolutely. Um, Mr. Brady, any more information on 5E? Yeah, Mayor Council, that's a subject for executive oh. session, so we'll give you a briefing if you wait till then. We'll, be fine. we'll get that in the, in the executive session. Thank you. Uh, any other questions on Monday's agenda, Council? Okay, hearing none, we'll move on to the next item for this agenda. Um, item 2A is to hear a presentation and discuss the conversion of existing high pressure sodium street light fixtures to more energy efficient light emitting diode street light fixtures and provide direction on possible financing options and, transi and transitioning the city's entire street light network from the one thing to the other thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, thank you very much. I should have noted that uh, both Mr. Thompson and Pinter are out of town today and excused. Thank you, uh, Mr. Richens. Gentlemen, thank you very much. This is, I know this is a, a topic uh, nationwide and so it's, it's, uh, it's good to hear about how we're going to handle it in Mesa, Arizona. Good morning, Mary. Mayor and council members. My name is Lenny Hume. I'm with the Transportation Department. Uh, we're going to, as you, I won't read through the agenda items since you did a great job with it, but I'll turn it over to Gordon Haas, the Deputy Transportation Director. He's going to talk about the presentation, introduce the rest of the folks, and, and then I'll take the questions as we go. Mayor, members, members of the council, we're pleased to be here this morning. Let me introduce who I've got with me this morning. To my right is uh, Woody Woodward, and he is the Streetlight Supervisor with the City of Mesa. And to my left is Adam Bowers with uh, Ride Engineering, and he's our technical expert and can help us answer questions this morning about uh, LED conversion. So we are here today to talk about um, streetlight conversion to more energy efficient LED fixtures. We're first going to talk about uh, a background information, a comparison of our existing high pressure sodium streetlight fixtures to the more energy efficient LED fixtures and the benefits of conversion and we'll provide some cost information and we will also discuss some potential funding mechanisms and then seek your, your guidance on this topic. First of all, to define uh, streetlight conversion to LED fixtures, we would like to replace the existing high pressure sodium light fixtures with more energy efficient light emitting diode, which is LED for short, light fixtures to reap the benefits of lower energy usage and lower maintenance costs. Let's compare the two types of lights. Uh, the high pressure sodium lamps have been com uh, commercially available since the 1970s, whereas the LEDs are a relatively new, uh, new on the scene. They became commercially available for street lights since 2008. Uh, the high pressure sodium having been an older technology, the cost of the fixtures is pretty much uh, leveled and nearly constant, whereas LED fixtures Every two years, they're coming out with new fixtures that are more energy efficient and are also less expensive. The high pressure sodium uh, versus the LED, the LED offers uh, better light placement, better control of the placement of your light. It also offers a longer lamp life, lower maintenance costs, lower energy costs, and it's proven to be so um, attractive that many manufacturers that previously have manufactured high pressure sodium are now moving towards the LED fixtures. 
We currently, every year, spend in energy costs on streetlights approximately $3.1 million. Uh, the LED fixtures use less energy and their maintenance costs are lower, primarily because the lamp, light, the lamp life is much longer, whereas the high pressure sodium needs to be replaced on average every five years, the lamp. The LED uh, often lasts 20 years or more. Other cities that are using Just LED. A question. Excuse yes. Me. Okay. Mr. So they've been making them since 2008. Or uh, how do we make that claim? Council member, Let's walk us through the testing that's done to show us that they last 20 years. So I believe it's been eight years since they first started coming on the market, right? So. So you, your, your cycle time is much different, but to, in the testing cycle, they'll continue to run them continuous to see how long they will last. Along with that, they can estimate based on the time on it. Is that correct? Estimate the time on, on how they uh, would uh, last in, in the field. So they accelerate the testing on those lamps. We, LEDs have been around, not just the, we're talking about the streetlight industry, the actual LED diodes have been around for, for, for years, and so they have some history on those. And uh, Council Member Richens, often the, uh, the life of the LED is also not to complete burnout, but when it reaches a certain level of degradation in the amount of light, when it is only putting out 80% uh, of the original light level. And so they can look at those curves and see when it will reach that point on its curve. So do you then, on your maintenance program, do a more proactive replacement maintenance instead of waiting till they burn out? So and under the current scheme, that you have a light when you burn it out, you go out and replace it. So how do you handle a replacement program then? Or am I ahead of the No, 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 you're fine. That's, here. that's fine. <laughs> no, you're fine. Uh, Council Member Richens, uh, with the high pressure sodium, we wait until they burn out and receive a report from the citizens, and we go out and replace the lamp. With the LED, uh, there would not be a burnout, so we would have to maintain the life history of that fixture and know when it reached the 20 years and replace it at that point in time. Do you have the software capability to do that? We do. Yes. In house? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay. we've had that for since the uh, uh, early or late 2000s. We have a city works as our asset management software. We track all the assets. We wear traffic control signs are the same way. We they have a 10 year life. We we project when that 10 years up. We go out and do a replacement of that sign. So we forecast that out. Thank you. Thank you. Also, to provide you some information about other Valley cities that are using LEDs for all new installations, this would be uh, any time they put in a new fixture or the new subdivision goes in. Phoenix, Chandler, Surprise, and Glendale all would require those new um, subdivisions to go in as LED lighting. I also am, uh, I found out yesterday that we omitted from the list an important city, which is uh, Gilbert. Our neighbor also does the same. Cities that are engaged in mass LED conversion projects, so they're going through the city and replacing all of their high pressure sodium fixtures with LED include Phoenix is, is now at some point in the, the process of an RFP SOQ process, uh, Austin, Texas, and Las Vegas, Nevada. City Mesa currently has approximately 36,000 high pressure sodium fixtures and the cost of replacing them, including uh, the labor costs, so both material and labor, is approximately $240 to $765 per fixture. The total cost to go throughout the entire city and replace those 36,000 streetlights with LEDs is approximately $14.6 million. And the re average return on investment period for that exercise is 11.5 years. Our current practice, what we're currently doing is as a high pressure sodium fixture uh, requires or becomes bad, the ballast goes bad or the fixture itself goes bad or the pole is struck in a traffic accident, we would rather than putting up high pressure sodium, we put up an LED, a new LED fixture. When we put up the new pole, we put up an LED fixture. We also encourage new developments and new installations to use LED. And I think uniformly across the board, the developers have been using LED lighting for the new subdivisions. So I'll, alternative, possible alternative timeframes for LED conversions, using our current practice where we replace it only as the fixture, the high pressure fixture goes bad, we're spending about $350,000 per year and it would take approximately 40 years to complete the conversion. If we were to spread these costs, the $14.6 million over five years, it would be approximately $2.9 per year, and again, spread over five years. 
possible financing or funding <clears throat> mechanisms would be to use local sales tax. This likely has viability only if we uh, continue our current practice of replacing it as the high pressure sodium fixtures go bad or to use bond funding, uh, put it on the next future bond election, or to use third-party financing. There are companies that perhaps you have been approached by the companies um, to provide financing, and they are paid back by the guaranteed energy savings performance. We've typically found that we're able to get financing at as, as attractive rates or more attractive rates than the third-party companies have been able to. Our recommendation is that we seek bond funding for the LED conversions of the $14.6 million as part of the next transportation-related bond election with the cost of conversion spread over five years, and the, the cost of the... And with that, I'll entertain any questions that you may have. Thank you. Mr. Luna. Uh, thank you, Gordon. Uh, appreciate all the hard work that you do and your staff. Have you ever thought of combining technologies when we use, uh, we put these lights and perhaps making them Wi-Fi available so that we can put routers throughout the city and um, maybe pairing it with information technology to making free Wi-Fi to our community? I know that uh, there's a whole concept of smart cities where they actually do that. They put Wi-Fi capability throughout the lights. They get the power from the light and then they're able to transmit Wi-Fi capabilities throughout the communities. Is that something you might want to look at as you move forward? Council Member Luna, as, as far as I know, the, the conversion to LEDs is kind of unrelated to the Wi-Fi, but mm -hmm. while that work is being done, they, they could be packaged together and, mm -hmm. and done together. We could look into that. I sit on the ITC committee, and there's <laughs> movements from, among communities throughout the United States to do that. So not only would you put Wi-Fi, but you would be able to track what's happening in the communities in the downtown area, for example, so that you can see traffic patterns and the flow of uh, pedestri pedestrians as well as cars. So uh, that's something you might want to look at. I can certainly forward you that information as far as uh, what communities are doing relative to that. And, and the other thing I wanted to uh, thank you so much for working with my community. As yes. you know, the, de the Desert Uplands is very concerned about the LED placements on Ellsworth and McKellips. And so I, I, I think this needs to be studied further. There's, you've received a number of emails. Yes, um, yeah not pleased with the current LED lights that are currently on, the, on that location. So I would ask that perhaps maybe Mr. Brady could direct the SAT committee to look at that and address some of those concerns. Um, I, you know, I received many emails and I know that you receive them as well. So I, I really believe this is something that we need to look at and perhaps mitigating some of the light output in those, uh, that part of that community. Thank you, Council Member Luna. Uh, yes, I have received those emails as well, and we, we will. I think a lot of their concern has been the lighting levels. Uh, um, certainly, there is some concern about use of LEDs, but there's also concern about the lighting levels on the arterial streets, and we certainly will look at that. And you and I have previously talked that we would take that to the SAT subcommittee, and look at lighting levels in the Desert Uplands area and see if there needs to be some adjustment there. Mr. Richens. Yeah, and some of that can be done with color temperature. There's there's a lot a wider a wider array on the market now and you know some of those adjustments through studies. But the question I had is 3.1 million that we spend is that combination of SRP and City of Mesa energy costs or is that just SRP? Uh, Council Member Richens, that is a combination of City of Mesa Electric and SRP. So what, if, if we do this conversion, what are we negotiating with SRP about those costs? Because as I understand, most streetlights are not metered, so we don't know exactly how much. So I'm guessing we pay a, pay a flat fee per pole. That is correct. So you're, you're correct, Council Member Richens, that they do have a rate structure. Many of them are not metered, and we pay a flat rate per, per, um, per pole. The, uh, the numbers that we presented today are built around SRP's current billing rate structure. We would like to have a discussion with SRP about their billing rate structure and, and adjust it to something that's more advantageous to the city of Mesa. And that does, doesn't that affect our return on investment pretty quick? Because if, if all of a sudden we're paying 80% of energy costs, you know, this is not a 11.5 year payback. It's dramatically different than that. It doesn't model right. So- Member Richard, you're correct. It does affect the- uh, the return on investment time period. So, it may, I mean, probably this whole program should come back to the SAT committee. Um, I'm less inclined to debt finance, and, and I'll t there, I have been approached by these companies. I've talked to several of them, actually. I toured one when I was on vacation. I know my wife hates me. But, um, <laughs> yeah, 
you know, but it was a historic city that we were touring, and it was amazing what they did with LEDs and, and light, different light temperatures and, and in certain spots depending on where they were in, within the city. And so they were really cognizant of that. Um, but I'm fascinated by that model, about that energy saving model. Our barrier is exactly what we were just talking about. We don't n know what the rate adjustments are going to be with SRP. My guess is SRP is not going to be real warm to negotiating with a third party about light cost saving changes. You know, so I know there's some significant barriers there. If anything that we roll out, we probably should roll it out within our city of Mesa service territory first, because we can model all that. We can we can look at those pieces pretty readily, and then see what happens. So I mean, I, uh, probably the you know looking at a pilot of some kind within our city of Mesa electric service territory, and I wouldn't mind opening it up to a little bit of competitive. See if some of these third parties, because we're the energy company see if some of these third parties can actually model something that makes sense. And a lot of these companies, they do all the maintenance for you. You outsource all the maintenance, you outsource the actual light installation, they proactively replace. And to your point, Mr. Luna, they put cell phone chips on those lights so those lights call them when they burn out. So they get a message and they're able to just go right out. So instead of a citizen calling, you know, or using the app saying, hey, this light burned out, the, the lights, and, and when a citizen sees you guys show up to replace the light the day it burned out or the day after it burned out, they're going to be shocked. You know, there's, but there's those technologies. And I mean, when we look at long-term costs, uh, your staff and, and employee-related expenses and all of those kind of things, maybe it's time to consider pushing some of those routine maintenance uh, to a third-party vendor and then keeping the key staff doing what you guys do best uh, within the transportation. So I, I really think it's worth uh, a really uh, good evaluation. We need to get finance in to sharpen our pencils on it. But I think the sweet spot is within our city of Mesa Electric Service Territory. Let's give something a try. And maybe we split it up. We split the, our territory into three pieces, and you guys do one, and we get some third-party vendors. It's kind of the same thing we did with um, fleet services and uh, uh, the uh, natural gas maintenance, you know, we, we talked about if we needed to, we could outsource that kind of thing. So, you know, no knock that you guys can't do it, but I think it'd be very interesting to have that conversation and see if we can save our taxpayers some money. Council Rich, and just to, to kind of give you a little background on that too, we've, we've been playing with the pilot program. We do have a system that we're, we're uh, modeling on the Fiesta District and, and other areas where it senses lights that are out. We have that, I mean, the technology's out there. We've been, we've been trying to pick the best approach, being cost effective and also getting what we want. The Wi-Fi side of it, it's just a matter of applying a diode or a device to the, the fixture and we could have that technology there. Um, our lights are set, our system's allowed to do that. It's just we're going to business. Now we had looked at doing a pilot program in the Fiesta District with a third party and given a substantial number of lights to try. Uh, just never penciled out well for us. So we, but we'll continue to, to research that because we most definitely want to find the best efficient. Well, and, that, and that's SRP service territory. Yeah, too. We that's had, the challenge. Yeah, sure is, it is. is. And that's that number. That SRP's rate structure is, is complicated. We're trying to team up with our other cities to. Uh, put a group together to restructure that their rates because it's based on a certain uh, number of watts range mm -hmm. that they fit into and with with the old technology uh, uh, high pressure sodiums the watts were pretty consistent LEDs have substantially gone down over the years and the rate structure stayed the same so we're going to try to aggressively go after that so how many how many watts how many megawatts if we were to replace 36,000 street lights does that save us RP is that t 10? I have to ask the, the smart guy here. Is it tw 20? <laughs> what, what's, what's the number? Because you make the case to SRP saying, look, you know, you have all these cities giving you back 20 megawatts, yes. and all of a sudden that's a power plant that they don't have to build. That's pretty you, substantial. And that's, that's some of the discussions we had with them. The biggest fixture, the biggest cost to a, a kilowatt being delivered to the pole is the fixed cost, and that's what we need to get SRP to adjust because it's not the actual cost of the, the kilowatt being at that light. It's the yep. actual delivery of that. Uh, device and and our, our uh, city of Mesa electric department is much more understanding of that and I think we pay watt for watt yeah, on a yeah. on it which is the way it should be yeah yeah I, I wouldn't be ready to make any recommendation about debt financing a street light replacement I mean there's a lot of pencil sharpening that needs to do some negotiations that need to happen to really understand what the return on investment is for this because it's I think the potential is amazing it's definitely something we should pursue but uh, we have 
get, you know, get, get your finance people in here uh, scrutinizing the, the numbers a little bit. And debt financing, I just, I don't know. I think we can do this without incurring debt on it. So thanks. Councilman, Council Member Richens. Yeah. Um, if I could just offer a little more information. Uh, you asked about the energy savings. Um, at the time we did this study, uh, which this presentation is based on, uh, based on that, that LED technology, which it con constantly updates. But the savings, if they did a citywide changeover, would be about 55 uh, percent. Uh, it varies depending on it. 55 percent of what? 55 percent reduction in energy usage. Yeah. Give me a number and a number. I don't have yeah. a kilowatt number <laughs> in front of me. But uh, like I said, okay. cut your energy usage by 55 percent. Which is a substantial number. I, we can get that to you. Yeah, by half. Yeah, just. Yeah, it'd be interesting to have that number. How many kilowatts that, that is? Yeah, because that, that's the. I mean, that's the key number to take back to SRP, and you start having to break it down by that conversation. It's like, what what do you defer in cost because you have this, or what are your other opportunities you're able to pursue because now you have an extra 55 percent of the city's power budget in, in your portfolio. So, I mean, making that case to the SRP is, well, we, you know, it's the direction we need to go, I guess. But great. Well, I, I think this is clearly the future. This is uh, what we know we're, we're going to end up doing uh, because they're going to, it's like bug, buggy whips. We're not going to have the, the other uh, option available to us before too long. So I, I like the idea of kind of penciling it into a 2018 streets bond because uh, it would be great not to do debt financing on it. But, you know, that gives us uh, 18 months or so to, to see how uh, maybe costs are continuing to come down and, Maybe once uh, as Phoenix negotiates with SRP and all these other big uh, contracts that are about to happen, we'll uh, uh, AO their APS. <laughs> yeah. yeah, maybe the argument can be made that similar rates ought to apply. So I, I, I love the idea of, of letting this percolate for another 12 to 18 months, and, and then if the numbers remain the same and we still have to bite off, you know, 10, 12 million dollars and that's not sitting in Mr. Brady's drawer. I, I would certainly entertain the idea of, of a street bond for it. But yes, Mr. Luna. I just think that it's critical that we begin to incorporate new technology as we roll this out. I mean, we would be foolish if we didn't do that, especially in the downtown area where we're going to have hopefully many, many students. And to have a Wi-Fi capability would be, would be a, a great thing for our community. So yeah. make sure that we roll that technology in. And, and we have. We've implemented. So there is Wi-Fi downtown right now outside yeah. in the public area. So where we can find a concentrated area of users. And we have I think we started rolling out some of the parks, too. So yes, yes. we're doing it downtown. We're doing a park. So I, to your point, it's a great idea. <clears throat> and how do we take things just kind of we're growing it out from those those points where people congregate. And I think that's exactly right as part of being that smart city concept. I think we're just trying to be strategic about where do um, our citizens kind of congregate, where we can get that density of service, so I think that's that's something we'll look at. Continue to expand in the future. So, you know. yes, Mr. Yeah, and, and, I mean the the lights aren't going to be a one size fit all approach. I mean, as you aptly illustrated, you know, the, you have dark skies issues that we have to consider, historic lighting issues in downtown Mesa that we need to consider. You know, some some neighborhoods. Uh, are better app for a, a certain application than others and having some smart people do those studies and help figure out and maybe there's a neighborhood involvement piece that needs to be discussed um, through all that so it's you know on its surface it seems like a pretty easy stuff but it sounds like the mayor kicked it past where me and you are going to be here Lenny yes. so, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 12 to 18 months that's way too far out <laughs> come on let's yeah. go people <laughs> so, thanks you bet uh, well, and, and this is developing quickly. I think everybody here knows every time we go out of town, any kind of, of uh, city function for uh, organizations, you're accosted by people that want to sell you LED lights. And so they're very aggressive in marketing this. And I, it, I just have this feeling that a year from now, things will be even more aggressive and prices will come down and they might have the, the next best thing and what, what they put on a light pole and maybe... It'll be something even more exciting than, than Wi-Fi. I don't know. So mm -hmm. I think there's, this is evolving. And so I, I think a year from now, if we put out an RFP, uh, we're, there, there'll be a lot of companies that want to talk to us about this. Right. Uh, yeah, I think that you, that you all said it. Um, the cost benefit is real, actually going to be realized once we work with SRP. Otherwise, we're yeah. not really accomplishing. All we're doing is putting up a different colored light. Because yeah. if we're still paying for the same energy cost, 
it's a, you know there's a, there's a maybe a, a little bit of savings and certainly we can do it in our five square mile city electric utility out of what are we at 140 just a round off 140 square miles I mean, that's great but to move the needle we really we all need to um, maybe express to SRP our interest in and working with the other cities to to um, acknowledge that this is a new technology and that uh, there needs to be a new rate structure to recognize um, this demand on their energy so and mayor if I might yes um, you know having those negotiations means that other discussions we're having with SRP we need to tread carefully about because they start blending together they know that what's this side of the house is doing when this side of the house is doing and you know I think of some of the other negotiations we currently have with SRP and we need to, to recognize that this is an intertwined activity that we do and if we're going to expect to get some of these cost savings we have to understand that some of the other policies we implement add cost to them and they'll be less inclined to negotiate well I don't know if that gave you the direction that you were looking for but uh, I think we're going to take this Yeah. working through some of these issues. I agree. Thank you very much. Thank Ellen. you. Appreciate the good presentation. Uh, the next item on our agenda for this, meeting is in, for this meeting is information pertaining to the current job order contracting projects. Council, any questions regarding those items? Uh, hearing none, the next item is to acknowledge receipts of minutes of, of various boards and committees. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And a second. All in favor, please say aye. Mm -hmm. Aye. Thank you. That passes. Um, Next item is to hear reports on meetings and conferences attended. Mr. Cavanaugh. Thank you, Mayor. I just want to follow up. Uh, we had a, a great event yesterday in the Fiesta District with the uh, uh, ribbon cutting for Southern Avenue Villas. And uh, uh, it's, it's gotten very nice uh, media attention. I heard the mayor several times this morning on KTAR. Uh, and uh, it's really his first new residential housing in the Fiesta District in more than 20 years. It's very nice, uh, major uh, private investment into the district, which is what we've been seeing this past year in terms of new jobs, reuse of, of older uh, buildings and strip malls. And it's, uh, it's nice to see the concept that the city's worked on so hard to add housing, to add jobs, to improve the infrastructure there. And again, I wanted to take a moment to thank all the city staff who worked so hard uh, to make this project come along in a very positive direction. Well, thank you, and, and congratulations to Mr. Kevin, Mr. Kevin. I would call that a, really a, a personal success for you as well. I know that's been uh, something you've worked on uh, literally for 16 years, I, I would think, or most of those that time. So congratulations on a, a big new residential project in the Fiesta District. Uh, any other items on reports on meetings attended? Uh, Mr. Brady, welcome back. We've Thank been you. counting the minutes that you were gone. Uh, <laughs> you know, you got to grow the staff, give them experience. So. Uh, th th thank you for th thank you for helping him to <laughs> they grow. <laughs> I mean, this collective sigh of relief when we saw you walk in. Uh, the uh, uh, thank you. Um, just a reminder, we'll have our council meeting on Monday. We'll see you then. <laughs> thank you. Okay. And I'll be here. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, I would now entertain a motion to uh, convene an executive session. Thank you in a second. 